Hey everyone, welcome to Saxfight. Today I'm checking out the Nexus Premiere. This was sent in for a review and you can check out the disclaimer down in the description below. But this video is supported by Basics to Bebop. Of course I have it on VHS. But this is my video course that I did alongside Chase Baird and you learn how to improvise. Basically you have iconic language that starts on one chord tone and leads to another and then those link up with other ones. So at any given chord tone you have dozens of options. It's a really freeing way to play. So if you find that you get stuck while you're improvising or you stutter, uh, check out Basics to Bebop. And let's jump in and check out the Nexus. So I won't go into every detail, but just a quick review. So this saxophone has a cognac lacquer, kind of a root beer color. And so it's got some reds in the shadows, some amber in the highlights. And it shifts a little bit, so if you look at that C-sharp key, you can th see things change as you move it around. Really beautiful. The neck or the bell is six and a quarter inches across from what I measured. Um, the Mark VI is about six inches, so a little bit wider bell. But we know that the saxophone is not a trombone, at least what we hear. If you take a look around here, there's some pretty standard things. I won't point out everything. We've got this long C key here. Of course, it's in high F sharp with a plastic thumb hook. We've got the Y arm side keys. But honestly, the main thing that you're looking for when you're buying a horn like this is who set it up and what the signature um, repair and feel and everything is like on this horn. So let me show you a little bit about what that means. So this horn was assembled in Taiwan, but then it was set up in the Boston Sack Shop, and they swapped out a lot of the materials, not all of them, for things like this. So this first one is natural cork. See, it's very flexible. It's easy to sand. It is compressible. But natural cork is, of course, used on the neck. This is the neck cork. And it's also used on the underside of the key feet so that you can have, you know, really proper key heights. And that's one of the signatures of the Boston Sack Shop setup is proper key heights. Um, Jack always talks about how changing the key heights is like opening up your mouthpiece or changing your mouthpiece. Um, it has this wild um, and very important effect, I should say. So I think that's been really well done. So the uh, key heights are done with this. There's also a few other materials here, like the Ultra Suede. See, this is a very soft, velvety-like material. And this is non-compressible, so this is actually used for the regulation, so that when you're playing the horn from day one and then on, it's not going to compress uh, the longer that you play and get out of sync. So that's actually a very intentional choice. And then the third one is um, synthetic cork, that's what it's called. So this is a thin sheet, and I actually didn't see it stacked up. Sometimes you'll see it stacked up like this. But I did see this on the G-sharp and bis adjustments. It was kind of a domed, thicker material. But this stuff is also non-compressible, but it's very difficult to sand. Um, so it has its uses on the instrument. There's also some high-quality felts that are you know, made of wool and everything like that. But the whole point of that is that the regulation, um, some of the more technical stuff is taken care of, and then some of the more subjective stuff is taken care of. So subjective things are going to be those key heights, how far those keys are apart and how that feels. Um, I know the different technicians there will play testing notes and compare them against each other. And I feel like this horn plays really evenly for me. I've done a lot of tone exercises. In fact, I took a tone lesson from um, Jeff Vidal. Amazing player. you got to check him out. Uh, definitely take a lesson with him. He's got some great tone exercises. But I've been doing that on this horn, and this horn's been really open for that. It's you know, really nice to play. Of course, it seals all the way down to the low, rent, to the low range, the low end of the horn. You know, you shouldn't expect any less from a new instrument anyway. Um, some other things are the key action. If you've ever played a horn set up by the Boston Sax Shop, then you'll know that the spring tension is uh, incredibly important for them. Um, a lot of modern saxophones, when you go to play them, they're super stiff springs. You know, you got to do your practicing to wear them in, or, you know, you can adjust them. But the average player, without that knowledge, isn't going to be adjusting springs. So in this case, um, Jack or Frank or whoever's setting it up uh, has adjusted the spring tensions to be really light. So it feels broken in. They aren't too light, but they also feel very even. And that's not a hard, that's not an easy thing to do, I should say. So it feels even on the left hand, on the right hand. Uh, it's just a really nice playing experience. You're not getting any slap back on the keys. Everything's just, you know, working properly. So those are some of the few things that I see on the horn body itself. Um, a good setup, honestly, if you had, if you want to get your horn set up, you know, depending on the technician, it could be 800 bucks, 1600 bucks. 
uh, whatever. So, you know, factor that into the value there. And this is a horn that's, you know, with before tax is under three grand. But you also see on the neck here, this is a very familiar shape. It is the Boston Sack Shop Heritage neck, or at least very close to it. I didn't measure exactly. Got some ultra suede here, so for some soft um, movement on that uh, neck pin. You can see the, the Nexus logos here with no neck badge. Unlike the other ones, it does have the bracing here and on the body too. Of course, you're gonna have all the bracing. So this isn't necessarily a light horn like the other ones. I wouldn't say it's heavy, but it's um, not intended to be that way. But when, anyway, one of the big differences here is that the ferrule, I'll show you that right up close. You see it's beveled inwards. I've got a chamfer to that. Now different necks will have that, but if you look at the Boston Sack Shop Heritage neck, you see it doesn't. It's a very distinct difference. They may share that upper upwards neck angle, a little bit higher neck angle, which is you know related to a more free blowing sound, um, more spread sound, but it does have that for even more. So at least that's what they say. I'd have to you know, put it in a wind tunnel. I don't know. How would you even test that? But we'll go with it. Well, let's get to the, the nitty gritty, the things that really matters. How does this horn play? So I've had this horn for about three months now, and I've been playing it every day, um, or at least every time that I pick up the horn. That should be every day, but you know how things are. And I've really enjoyed it. Um, it to me, it feels a little bit of a brighter horn. Get some nice airflow through it. In fact, I'm actually trying to do more of a Michael Brecker vibe, which is totally opposite of anything I've ever studied, and I'm not a bright player, so it's kind of an experiment with this instrument. But I find that it's really, um, it seals really well. Really enjoy doing tone exercise on it because everything from the C-sharp down uh, and, of course, above uh, seals really well. <laughs> So I just finished with the play test and some of the things that I noticed, um, the high F sharp, the altissimo F sharp seems to tune a little bit differently than on my, on my Mark VI. Maybe that has to do with the high F sharp key. 
But I still haven't quite decided if I like the, the fork in one finger or the fork two in the side B flat. Um, for the examples, I use the, the fork in one finger that I'm used to. So you might hear a little bit of that. Um, the horn sealed great throughout the whole, you know, play tests. Uh, it did everything that I needed it to, so I had to go down to the low range, did some subtone, some, br some really bright stuff, swapped out the mouthpieces, and I think the horn was, was up for that. Feeling-wise, it's very comfortable. The palm keys sit right in my, my hand. So that's very nice. I think I need to get some risers on my Mark VI. Um, the spatula, this is something that I found that's a little bit interesting. It does seem to stick out just a little bit more. And so when I actually lay the horn, I know you're supposed to lay the horn on its, like this, if you're going to lay down at all. But I tried it like this for some photos, and it um, seems to stick out a lot more than my Mark VI. Um, not to compare, but that's really, you know, the reference that I'm going for. And references that you'd understand, so it might be a little bit wider table here. I also noticed that if I'm using key leaves, um, it's a little bit difficult to use it under the C-sharp key for that same reason, because I put it in the C-sharp key. The spatula moves and then it's kind of in the way in the case. So it does fit in a normal case. Uh, if you're using key leaves, they probably won't work on that C sharp. Um, the bell does fit in my BAM classic case. I know it is a little bit on that bigger side, but I haven't had issues with you know either the case that it came with or the BAM. So it should be fine there. If you're looking for a saxophone around the $3,000 range that will accommodate different styles and has a great setup, the Nexus Premier definitely works for that. Let me know what you think. What do you think about this instrument? What do you think about the play tests? Leave a comment down below. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe so you can catch all of my future videos. And I'll see you on the next one.